Okay, this is One Percenter, Hounds of the Moon, Santa Juanita Chapter, Session 1. That was a lot. Um, we are joined uh, by our beautiful players and myself. We are missing a beautiful player who's going to be joining us next week, which is fine, because today we're mostly just doing character creation and stuff. But I do want to start with cats. Uh, concept, aim, tone, and subject matter. The concept of one percenter is you are playing uh, outlaw bikers. Uh, this you're an outlaw biker gang, and you are doing uh, criminal outlaw shit. Uh, and you also, however, are connected to a community, and you do like charity work and stuff as well. So. Uh, it is very much um, Sons of Anarchy, the role-playing game. Uh, who here is familiar with Sons of Anarchy? Before we, all right, got an ish. I've watched a couple episodes. Okay, a couple episodes. All right, cool. I, I've seen the whole thing. It's great. A really good show. You, you should watch it. Mm, I um, binge watched it. It made me um, take up smoking again after I hadn't <laughs> smoked for years. Oh, I'm no. like, smoking is cool. <laughs> <laughs> smoking is cool because <laughs> Charlie Hunnam smokes. Um, yeah, uh, so it's it's the idea is um, you know you are um, you, you are outlaw bikers. So like you know you you're part of a motorcycle club. In this case, it's a motorcycle club called the Hounds of the Moon, and you are kind of like a family. Like your your spouses, significant others, and uh, and your fellow outlaw bikers uh, kind of hang out together, probably at a bar. Um, and you uh, support each other. You probably have day jobs, like legit jobs. Um, there's probably like in Sons of Anarchy, they run a uh, they run a garage, right? As their sort of like legit, you know, legit business. And uh, they're really active in their community. Like I said, they do like charity work and stuff. They're really active in their community. They like raise money, you know, for like the local schools and stuff like that. Uh, but they're also criminals. Um, they, you know, they have like a they have like a, a business that they do that uh, uh, that is against the law, and so that's kind of the deal. Um, and there's more to it than that, but that's that's the basic idea. We are the game's uh, normal setting is you play a chapter of a motorcycle club who are called nomads, and nomads are not fixed in place. They don't have like a town or a community they're a part of. They just move from chapter to chapter and uh, and kind of do jobs as needed. However, our series is not going to be that. You guys are going to be a local chapter. You are going to be the Santa Juanita chapter of the, um, of the Hounds of the Moon, okay? And because you're going to be a local chapter um, focused on a town, we're going to spend a lot of time building that town, the characters in it, and kind of how you all connect up to it. Uh, One Percenter as written does not do that. Um, you kind of just make your characters, and there's a couple of basic pieces of information you answer about the the you know about your, about your, your your MC, your motorcycle club, but otherwise uh, you just kind of get going. We're going to spend a lot of time on the community aspects. Okay. Uh, because I think that's the most interesting part of Sons of Anarchy. I mean, it's also it's also very enjoyable to watch Charlie Hunnam get naked and, you know, do what he does. And it's also very interesting to watch them beat the shit out of people and have all that drama. But but ultimately, it's like a family drama show, right? <laughs> like, it's, a, it's about the sort of dynamics of their community, uh, uh, both within and outside of the club. And so we're going to focus on that. Uh, I will mention that Robert, the author of the game, is watching this, not at the moment, but he will be, um, and uh, he's working on a 2E of One Percenter, and uh, I have encouraged him to steal any of my processes uh, for this series, if he wishes. Okay, so aim of today is we are going to make our outlaw bikers following the procedure in the book. Then we are going to create the town of Santa Juanita. That is off book. Uh, that's something I've put together, uh, but we will do that. And, and um, the order is we'll make we'll make bikers. We will uh, ask some questions about the bikers and about the a little bit a few questions about like uh, the town itself. And then we're going to take a break. Uh, and when we come back from the break, we're going to ask about specific NPCs in the town. Okay, and you guys will be providing the questions for those, uh, a la Monster Hearts, right? 
So Monster Heart setup goes that way. I'll talk about it in more detail when we get there. Uh, but once we're done with that, uh, we're done for tonight. That's that's all we're doing. We're not going to be playing. Uh, tone of the game. You know, I'm going to go with Tone of Sons of Anarchy because I've never played this game. I don't really know exactly how it shakes out. But the Tone of Sons of Anarchy, which is going to be my touchstone, is it's serious. It's a drama. Um, it is often funny, uh, but it's a sort of like naturalistic funny. It's not like gonzo or goofy funny. Um, it can be a little melodramatic at times, um, and it can be very, uh, you know, it's, I think it's actually like directly inspired by a Shakespeare play. I can't remember which one, uh, possibly, uh, it's Hamlet, right? I think it's Hamlet. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I think, I think, I think you might be right. Um, so it's got like, um, it's got like a lot of drama to it, right? Uh, and so I think if we just maintain a sort of like realistic, dramatic approach, I think we're gonna be fine. Subject matter wise, I do want to point out a couple of subject matter things. I think that in real life, motorcycle clubs are, uh, they're, they're, they're quite sexist organizations. Uh, they, are, they are all men. Uh, and they have their and and their wives are their old ladies, and it is very much like the men folk are going out doing the thing while the women you know hold down the home front kind of situation, right? Uh, they also typically break down along racial lines, and so you'll have like uh, you'll have like white MCs, you'll have uh, Latino MCs, and uh, and and there are even there there are black MCs as well, probably not quite as many, but in any case. For our game, we are going to discard all that. <laughs> if you want to play a woman biker, you should fucking do that. If you want to uh, be, uh, uh, you know, diverse in terms of like the racial representation of the characters in the MC, I'm totally great with that as well. And uh, yeah, so we're not going to stick to that kind of like realistic notion of a motorcycle club. Um, other subject matter notes: I suspect we're going to be doing violence and crime, so uh, be prepared for that. And I do want to go ahead and just put a hard stop uh, on uh, no sexual assault, uh, no sexual violence of any kind. Uh, I would like to veil um, any violence towards children or pet animals. Um, those are my personal particular things. Does anybody else have anything they want to throw out there as just kind of no-go areas, either behind a line or a veil? Um. Probably um, graphic descriptions of um, suicide. <laughs> like, like it's fine if that's part of a storyline, but not like major detail about how that occurs for me. Good. Anything else? Uh, if you don't want to share it now, you can you can let me know later since we're not playing until next week. But um, Otherwise, we're going to have X card on the table. If something happens that you uh, are not cool with or is unfun, or I'm sorry, is uncomfortable in an unfun way, uh, by all means, uh, click the X card button on the roll for your party or just type in X card in the chat. I may ask uh, what is getting X carded, but I won't ask why it's getting X carded. Okay. And that is that. Do you guys have any questions about cats? Okie doke. In that case, let's. Go to documents. All right, so you have three documents inside the folder. Um, there's a copy of the one percenter rules. There is a doc that has uh, that has the questions and stuff I'm going to be asking later. You guys can ignore that for now. And then there's a Google sheet that has the actual character keeper. Uh, shout out to Rich Rogers who created this character keeper. It is very good. It is way fancier than what I would have done. <laughs> um, so I'm glad he had it because mine would have been some basic ass, just empty cells that you type everything into. <laughs> um, but Rich has got a nice little, lots of drop downs and stuff. Um, you're going to want to open up the rules to the game. And we're basically just going to follow the procedure and the rules. Those procedures start on page, let's see here. Uh, they start on page four. Now, one thing that it has you do is it has you come up with your club name, your logo, and your rival. I have a different procedure there, so we're going to ignore that for now. But if you want to go down to page, um, it's page five of the text and page uh, page nine of the PDF. Um, it says make your biker. 
and that's where we're going to that's the procedure you guys need to follow there so just go through that go through each step your name your real name then your road name um you're going to be assigning uh some some numbers to either you know being cool or being a badass um you'll have your your things things are like basically like your kind of like your stats essentially your abilities uh, they kind of describe what each of them mean there, so I'm not going to read them all off, but you can, you can just read those for yourself. And then uh, you'll choose three expertises, which are like your uh, areas of expertise. These are like your criminal things you're good at. Um, and then we'll roll for fucks, and then that is it. So do you guys have any questions about that? All right, just start going through there. I'm going to step away for a little bit. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and... Uh, uh, just start that process. And if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat. I'll be paying attention to the chat, even though I'll be off camera. Um, or uh, just wait till I get back, okay? But otherwise, I'll see you in a bit. Is San Juanita a real place in the actual real world? Or is it a place that just sounds like a real place? <laughs> I'm Googling right now. <laughs> I think it's a place in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> According to Facebook. I mean, not Facebook. Well, yeah, Facebook too. It's also a, a diamond thing and a name for a smart witty and funny woman apparently like a, that's the literal translation <laughs> so fair enough <laughs> oh my gosh these names are so good pick this one <sighs> There's so many attributes. Are you guys going to be um, cool or badass? <laughs> I'm gonna be badass. I have this problem where, like, I just tend to play characters who are kind of reasonable and avoid conflicts, and I'm trying to not do that. So, we'll see. cool. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that, and I was gonna to ask too. I think I want to, like, I'll be badass, but maybe not be that good at it. <laughs> so I might put my good stat in. <laughs> I like being um bad at doing the thing I want to do a lot of. <laughs> hmm. It's just like real life. <laughs> a few on that. Uh, yeah, I wonder what that, like what that necessarily involves. Like I should read that document right there. 
If you're damaging it, you're being badass. Yeah, I haven't played a very intense and or angry character in a while. Hmm. But Sam, you're thinking of doing like a high on the badass character as well, right? And so one, there's only two choices. So it's not like this is a niche to be protected. And two, if you look, you add your stats and your and your cool and badass together. So take a look at the the stats, and each one gives things that it says what what you do with cool, what you do with it with badass. So that yeah. I think is going to be a little more distinctive. I mean, I've been looking at it, but I also feel like it's still like thematically kind of the same. A lot of the badass plus blank are for hitting people. <laughs> I did notice that. Yeah. Headbutting or punching. Or just bash a door in, I guess, with your gut. I'm really bad at charity work. Everybody doing cool so far with character creation? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Yeah, we were discussing like whether we want to be cool or badass. <laughs> <sighs> we, we should talk about which crimes we want to do. Or it says that they, we should try and split things up so that everyone, we, we have all the crimes covered. Oh. Uh, the areas of expertise. Yeah, I'm putting tools at three for me though i'm going with high badass and low cool so there's also that so you're gonna be killing people basically <laughs> you're gonna be with, with with a high tool and high badass i think that's just like shooting yeah. people <laughs> yeah i'll play the the fraser character yeah game. exactly <laughs> his his motorcycle would fly out of a helicopter so like, <laughs> he would hey, halo jump out of, out of his motorcycle true it's true cool 
cool. And look at the what is the little rule for assigning your abilities? You have to, oh, I see you get two at three, four at two, and two at one. I don't have that many fucks to give, my friends. How many did you roll? <laughs> Four. Oh, nice. Fucks are essentially your your hit points, basically. But I think it also it represents. I think it represents not just like physical harm, but also like kind of just being emotionally over it, right? So. Is, there, is there a way to acquire more acquire additional? Yep, there fucks? are. Do charity, charity work. Oh my god, I'm so bad at charity. <laughs> I think it's like the literal only way to get them. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah, okay, I should sure. be a little better at charity. <laughs> yeah, it'll just make it more interesting. I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, I understand the expertise now. Oh, I see, I see. Oh. I've just thrown stuff in there that I'm not super attached to any of them. So if you um want to be good at one of the things I'm good at, then feel free to do that oh chops do you okay i think we I... can double up right i think it's just suggesting oh, sure. it makes yeah. sense to like <laughs> if you want to yeah. game it like yeah I, th I think like it's a tactical decision to yeah to be even split well but, but ultimately like david's gonna be here next week and his character might have a lot of the same stuff right? yeah yeah I was kind of letting it shape my character creation a bit by choosing um, murder because I really don't want to murder anyone when I thought it would be sad and like when I do it. and get away with it. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely going to choose murder just because it seems like the being good with tools is means shooting someone in the head. Seems tools very and badass. Yeah. I think tools and badass is like hurting people, right? So. I was yeah, also um, I was also thinking of my character as a bit of a drug dealer type character, so I deliberately didn't choose smuggling so that I can get caught carting drugs around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wonder, I, having not played one percenter, I wonder if a sort of PBTA style leaning into complications is going to work here. It might be. You might just fucking die. That might be the end I'm of always that. trying to do it in OSR. I'm like, I run in yelling and drawing attention to myself. I know. Like, you die. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a terrible OSR player. Every OSR game I've been a player in, I've, I'm bad at it because I'm like, hell yeah, I want to do that. I want to go into that fucking... Yeah, I'm touching it. What are you talking about? Of course I am. <laughs> How about Snuffy, first one of you murderers? Wait, what was this? Uh, the, one of the road, one of the road names is Snuffy. Oh, one nice. of you murderers. No. <laughs> Snuffy. Hmm. I'm wondering if I have extortion, do I still want robbery? <laughs> <laughs> this conversation is surreal. Both <laughs> acts are prohibited by the Hobbs Act. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm, I guess so. I guess extortion is more personal and robbery yeah. less so. They they go together like uh chocolate and peanut butter. Extortion can become robbery very quickly. Or it's more like extortion or is assault. like a long term relationship and robbery is more like a one off. But you also might steal some shit accidentally that can then be used for extortion, right? You're like, hey, what's this? Like the, these strange photos I found of lewd apps. <laughs> I, I, I believe it's like extortion is uh, robbery is is uh, taking something with the immediate with force or the immediate threat of force, and extortion is like taking things with th other threats, basically. It says using violence or threats to get money from some jerk. I I am gonna go purely with violence, and not speaking. I think for my character. <laughs> I was gonna choose. I'm thinking of using the name, uh, the road name Tiny, 
because I think like a dime bag, (laughs) a tiny like dime bag, (laughs) (laughs) dime bag. Yeah, I saw the chat. I thought that was funny. (laughs) It's so, it's so so quaint. But I'm also a really short person in real life, and I'm like, do I really want this again <laughs> in game? Well, you could be one of the people who's called tiny, ironically, because you're actually yeah. Just... That's that's what I was thinking, like little John. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> little John. True. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was my bad, little John. <laughs> A different little John, you know. <laughs> I'm so <sorry. laughs> Oh my. What's your road name going to be, Sam? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, considering uh, names created by bad experiences like Crash or Duck. <laughs> duck. <laughs> yeah. I like I just like these little like these little like descriptions of the of the expertise. Like assault. This is being I'm totally else. picturing if you call duck, you're gonna have like some sort of like massive scar on your forehead, right? And that's where that, that is exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Right, I, think, I think it's decided. All right, that's duck, right. That is... Road name well, goes here. Yeah, that goes there. Wow, he, he actually like has a road name selector. Um, oh, it has them all on there. Wow. <laughs> Who wants to be called an anus? That's all I want to know. Like, I... <laughs> I don't. I don't think you choose your nickname. Oh, good point. Yeah. Um, some are born anus. Some become anus. <laughs> some have anus thrust, thrust upon, upon them. them. <laughs> you didn't choose the anus. The anus chose you. <laughs> oh. So, so uh, a character's uh, name is going to be Liam Hernandez. I have a friend who's a pediatrician who's telling me that asked him what the most popular baby name is, and he said it's uh, it's Liam. I was like, wait, but don't you, you aren't you working at like a hospital in, in Washington Heights? Uh, it's like, oh yeah, but it's super popular among Latinos too. I have all these Liam Hernandezes and Liam Fernandezes. Ooh, hey, I just thought of something. This is for the, this is for Robert, the game designer for 2E. It would be really cool if the way you got your road name is you pose a question to the player about some particularly interesting or dramatic moment of their membership in the club and then after they describe it all the other players say what your road name is oh my gosh yeah that, that's that really would, good <laughs> that would really i think that would be more like it mm. would definitely mimic how this could possibly happen in yeah because yeah, i had so many shit nicknames in high school too so that mm. totally worked like I was called Forrest Gump for ages. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I was called, re- yeah, because I talk weird and I run really fast and then suddenly start beating up people when I've had enough. <laughs> like, hey, Forrest Gump. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys have played The Ward, um, but uh, the, every character has a nickname and the way you get your nickname is... Um, if you've made your character and they've assigned like like the created the relationships, everyone has like a level of rapport. The person who has the worst relationship with you picks your nickname. Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that I, I love that. I think that that's super on genre too for that game, right? Like that's really really like on genre. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, that that's. I want to see that in two E, Robert. Let's just throw that out there. Lay, lay stakes right now. Feel free to credit me as you wish. <laughs> yeah, I, I've also chosen my, my uh, what is it? Yeah, the, the road name, and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, nice. See, now I want to know why you're called Itchy, why you're called Duck, and why you're called Chops, right? Yeah. Whereas, yeah. So if we did it the other way, you would we would know why you're called that, right? 
So. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, I was gonna, I was splitting between Itchy and Geezer because I think, regardless, I'm imagining my character as like a short woman anyway, and I think <laughs> it's just Geezer is. It seems to fit. Like a short. Like how is is it G double E Z E R Geezer? Yeah, Geezer. Uh, cool. I was also thinking like the pyramid thing. <laughs> oh, like Geezer. <laughs> yeah, Geezer. <laughs> This is a, this is, yeah, that was geezer. That was a, that was a, a American slash Canadian pronunciation of that word. Right? How do you, how would you that, say that it? That said exactly the same in, in my accent. Well, too. like, uh, well, like in a lot of like, yeah, a lot of other accents like geezer would, like you would say geezer, it would sound like geezer, right? Yeah. But it would, it would not hear, by the way, that's not how that would sound here. Like geezer would sound like geezer. They sound exactly the same to me when you say them. <laughs> like That's I can't even funny. hear the difference. <laughs> you can't even hear the difference. <laughs> all right. We've all got names. That's exciting. Um, everyone has their things filled in. Uh, waiting on one expertise for Itchy. All right, I forgot. Oh. And did you guys roll fucks? Not yet. This is the second game, not in a row, but the second game out of three games I've run that has a term of art that is a vulgar word because I also ran Velvet Glove, which has a stat called Pussy. So True. That's a thing. It's also a gang related game. So, that as well. Functioning with a, a theme. The between does not have any cussing at all. It's very proper. Maybe the American, the American can cuss, but no one else can. How many fucks do you give Agatha? I'm still, I'm still choosing my third expertise. So let me roll, and then I will let you know. Do you just roll a d6? Is that how that works? Or two d6? OK. It's a, ooh, that is eight. All right. We both give um, an equal amount of fucks. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, look oh, at duck. you guys, high rollers. All the fucks you have to give. <laughs> All these fucks you have, wow. <laughs> oh, duck, you are just skating on life. No fucks to give. Cut I that. look forward to saying, this is my last fuck, and it's gone now. <laughs> cool. Um, looks like we are ready to roll the next part. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is introduce characters by uh, birth name and road name. And if you know why you're called your road name, that'd be fun. Um, or if other people at the table have an idea of why you're called your road name, that would also be fun. That'd be more fun. And maybe uh, just, just say what your expertise areas are and, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, let's start, I'm gonna go in the order of the sheets. So Agatha, please tell us about Itchy. Itchy's uh, birth name is Hannah Watts. Um, she got the name Itchy because, um, I think it's because she always like jumps the gun when 
uh, literally maybe uh, when it's like in some in like tense situations or whatever, she would like just fire first. So she has a very itchy trigger finger and she's always just like, and I think maybe she at first she's like that that name is garbage, but I think she's kind of grown into it. And now she's like, are you itching for, are you itching for a beating kind of thing? That's like become, she's really fully embraced that. Um, her expertise is in murder, extortion and arson. So uh, she's a, uh, with a Violet. muscle, I guess. <laughs> yeah, she's a tank. She's the, yeah. she's the gun lugger, right? Yeah. Good. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. All right. Uh, Sam, tell us about Duck, please. So uh, Duck, real name, Liam Hernandez. Uh, he got his name during an infamous uh, massive bar fight in which uh, Itchy yelled for him to duck, and he didn't, and he got smashed in the face with a bottle and has a big, ugly-ass scar over it. Um, and uh, he is good at smuggling, assault, and theft. Um, and I think that he's like the, the uh, like our connect. He is the, re the relationship for, for bringing uh, drugs across the border, uh, which we then sell. I assume it's Santa Juanita is close to the border. That's yeah. Uh, actually, it's not. Uh, we'll talk about the setting and stuff. Oh, right. yeah. Well, then we'll scratch, scratch, scratch <laughs> like that, uh, and we'll we'll figure yeah. out how that works. Yeah, your and your crime might not be. You're, you're, I mean, maybe you've done drug running in the past. Your current crime might be something different then. Okay. Um, or we'll, your current we'll like, like, yeah business he, or whatever. He's good at uh, smuggling uh, theft and assault. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I love it. Thank you. And Lou, please tell us about chops. Okay, um, Chops, um, his birth name is Stevie Jones. Um, I'm kind of picturing him as like a, um, like a pretty big guy, like unfit. <laughs> um, and I think he's called Chops. Well, I just named him after um, the guy I used to buy marijuana from when I was a teenager. <laughs> it's a common nickname for somebody that you like buy a pot from. <laughs> So I think he's kind of a big, like, fat stoner. Um, and the in terms of expertise, I've got arson and vandalism just because I liked the idea of a big fat guy having to run really fast away from um, setting up an explosion and possibly failing at it um, and just, you know, breaking stuff and then I I chose murder mainly because um I thought it might be interesting in terms of story for somebody that might not be a killer to do that and then be forced into it but then have a way of getting out of it yeah so I cool. because I, I I didn't realize that you also had arson I'm just gonna change my arson to a robbery which is mm. Basically the same as extortion in my mind, but bad news. Awesome. Uh, thank you, everybody. Good. Okay. Now I have questions I'm going to pose to all of you that uh, that are going to help build out some details about the motorcycle club as well as the town of Santa Juanita. I will tell you first a little bit about the basics of Santa Juanita. Santa Juanita, it is in California, but it is actually a little bit like kind of like uh, in the valley, like it's kind of like a little central and north. Uh, it is, it, it's a small town, uh, semi-rural, and it still has a lot of like uh, agriculture uh, going on and around it. But I think it also has like a small, like a very small branch of the University of California system uh, in Santa Juanita as well. And yeah, that's that's the basics of Santa Juanita. The <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that's what you need to know about that. So I've got some questions I'm going to pose um, to you all. I might direct certain questions at everyone uh, to 
to help out with, but others will be directed at, at, at individuals. And we'll just do that. The first thing we need to figure out is you are all members of a motorcycle club called the Hounds of the Moon. Hounds of the Moon has chapters all across, uh, well, different parts of California, um, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, uh, probably going as far up as um, as uh, as Oregon and Washington, right? So uh, th that's kind of the, you know, that's sort of like backwards J shape. You know, there are chapters all along. Uh, Santa Juanita is uh, shortened to San Juan. Uh, so you would always refer to Hounds of the Moon San Juan. That's kind of how you'd call yourselves. And you might even call yourselves Hounds of the Moon San Juan Original because uh, Santa Juanita was the first Hounds of the Moon chapter, which also means you're kind of like the like Hounds of the Moon Prime, okay? <laughs> so uh, whenever there's big Hounds of the Moon rallies and meetings, uh, your your club has a just a slight like kind of higher place of, of respect than the other clubs do, right? So that's kind of the deal there. I'm purposely not going to say who the president of the club is right now. I think I want to uh, wait for David to be here um, and we'll decide that. Um, but someone, whether you, one of you or an NPC, will be the president of the chapter. And as president of the chapter, that also makes, as president of San Juan Original, that also kind of makes them president or like the most important person in the entire Hounds of the Moon, right? So they're a big deal. Um, yeah, so that's that. Let's talk about other questions. So as far as the Hounds of the Moon go, you you each wear what's called a cut. A cut is a like a leather vest. Um, if you're real old school, it might be a denim vest, but in any case, uh, if you're one of the original originals, but otherwise you wear a leather vest and on the back is a beautifully embroidered uh, image logo of the Hounds of the Moon, right? And so the way our process is going to go, we're not going to be drawing it in the game. If we're playing face-to-face, -face, we draw it, but I'm not going to do that for online. If somebody wants to draw it, I'd love to see it, but, but otherwise we're just going to talk about it. So each of us, myself included, are going to name one detail of the Hounds of the Moon logo, okay? Like one central detail. And Lou says he's gonna draw it and I, I can't wait to see it. So pay attention to these details, Lou. All right, so Hounds of the Moon, I'm going to start by saying that the Hounds of the Moon logo has a prominent silhouette of a wolf baying at the moon. Sorry, I know that was, I know somebody, somebody wanted to take that one, I'm sure, but, um, but that is the deal there. Whoever wants to add the next detail, please say so. Um, just because I'd want to draw it, I think it, um, I'm just adding to yours. I think it's that, um, I'm just, I'm just, um, What's that stupid word where stuff's mirrored? I've got a weird mental block. Um, it's a really common word. <laughs> not just mirrored or? <laughs> yeah, no, it's like the maths word where like it's equal on the other side. Oh, yeah. Symmetrical, yeah. symmetry. Yeah, symmetric. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking of like two, there's a wolf on each side. So the mm -hmm. moon, and so there's like two wolves howling at the moon. Okay. Is there something different about the two wolves? Like, is one like a certain color or something? Or yeah, maybe um, you know the um, you know the Cadejo story. You know that. Am I saying that right? Like, it's um, there's a uh, it's a story like of a there's a black Cadejo and a white Cadejo. There are these wolves that you um, I think it's a South American mm -hmm. thing. And if the black one crosses your path, it's like a really bad sign. And if a white one crosses your path, it's like good yeah, um, fortune. So maybe as a black and white wolf yelling at the moon. I like that. Yeah. So like one black, one white. Is that the idea? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's go with that. Feel free to veto this. This is just the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, beneath the wolves is like uh, a, a person like hulking out into a werewolf. 
I like it. I'm into it. Yeah, <laughs> totally <Yeah>. into it. <laughs> The technical challenge of the drawing just dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that's actually super canonical too, because Hounds of the Moon is actually the werewolf biker gang I've used in numerous, uh, both in Monster Hearts and Monster of the Week. So yeah, that's like. Wait, can you like describe further what that looks like? Like how I'm like having a hard time imagining. Like, so there are two, two there are two symmetrical wolves, but of different colors, and the then moon wolves. And then a hulking out werewolf yeah. dude. At the bottom. I, I, this, I, is what I, this is what I've got so far. So, it's so, like so. a moon <laughs> oh. and somebody hulking out in the. <laughs> oh, like what? Yeah, someone who's like becoming yeah. a werewolf. So, so I, I, cool. I, what I was kind of imagining, and I have no, as I said, if you, if you want to draw it like that, uh, that's sort of totally fine, um, was kind of, I guess I should figure out a way to, to draw this and hold it up to the camera. Um, but basically, someone kind of like doubled over in profile. Um, so like, um, this is getting into so, so they're, they're in the super <laughs> painful part of yeah. the transformation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 on, right. on, their, on their knees and like, oh, oh, and yeah. I, I just so. drew that exact thing. Yeah, I like afterwards. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Good. I love it. Yeah, it's all it's very symbolic, right? Like we've got diversity. We we know how to suffer. We know how to, you know, we're uh, and we on the like weekends. <laughs> and on the weekends we get on our bikes and we turn to fucking animals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, right? Yeah. Oh, I that's good. Those are not going to be even though like my canonical for Monster Hearts and Monster of the Weeks, Hounds of the Moon are werewolves that you are all not going to be werewolves. Just a different, different parallel universe of, of Hounds only of the Moon. metaphorical or, monsters, yes, not literal. Metaphorical. Or is that the third session twist? Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh, no, right. Yeah, yeah. There's a really good um, mountain goat song um, called Werewolf Gimmick that's about a um, like a wrestler with a werewolf gimmick that's like super into like getting into character and stuff. I'll share a link with you guys later. <laughs> awesome. awesome. So I want, I think um, at first I was like, oh, the moon should be red. But then I was like, it looked like the sun. That sucks. Um, so but instead, I, I want. Like a red moon. <laughs> yeah. Because also, I'm wondering if everything is just on a red circle. Like there's like. So instead, so like the embroider in the back, there's just it's like all red and it's like a circle, and then in there you see like the the two wolves and the dude in pain, and then that one tiny moon. Nice. I'm okay with that. Moon. That's rad. I totally want the patch now as well. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I just want this blood moon. I want it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> awesome. You know, so have... is cool. Stay in school. So we have our logo. Of course, there'll be some like stylized text that says Hounds of the Moon as well. So we've got that. Uh, great. Next question is, this is for an individual. Um, and I'm going to say this is for, oh, I'll, I'll throw it to Sam. Um, <clears throat> Sam, what kind of, or maybe I should start calling you by your character as well. Duck. Duck, what kind of work does the San Juan chapter do? And by work, I mean, what's your major crime? Drugs, drug smuggling. Drugs, right. that sounds good. Are you, are you like, I wanna make sure I have this really, I have this really down. Like, do you, I, do you like receive like, you know, somebody like drops something off from like, like, are you, like, are you an intermediary? Like you get it to the people who are gonna distribute it or what, like, how does that work? I, I think that, uh, stuff like comes up from the south, and we have the job of moving it through a big courier of train up to San Francisco. But then we also get some to to sell and distribute it. Right. So you kind of like go down south. You're kind of a courier. You bring it up north and uh, uh, sell some, and can give the rest off to to whoever. Okay, good. I love it. Uh, let me. I'm just gonna put drug courier there. Awesome. Um, this is for Itchy. Itchy, what charity or public service project in Santa Juanita is the motorcycle club known for helping? Um, I think it's the, the, Ch the Chihuahua Rehabilitation Project. <laughs> this might be a little off in tone. Do you mean like, 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 is that a thing? Like, like Chihuahuas? Yeah. Like, oh, wow. like the feral chihuahuas? <laughs> I 
have all been like like this is a thing right i, be- I, I believe it is yeah. ca- in california where what? like they're they're like g- gangs there- question mark <laughs> of like feral chihuahuas that are like they were like thrown you know like dumped by their the oh. their owners and then they like all banded together and they like menace local wildlife and so on. <laughs> I mean, I could it. Something I'm else too. No, I'm into it. I'm totally can into we it. um can we expand it to be like like a dog like rescue type of thing in general, just so it's not so hilarious sounding <laughs> for some reason. Like yeah, there's there's a, there's kind of fundamentally humorous about chihuahuas. Chihuahuas are really... so scary. I'm scared of chihuahuas. <laughs> I'm just saying they ain't playing like maybe the chihuahuas are like the poster dog of the like larger like like dog rescue thing i don't know yeah sure i mean it could be a dog rescue i'm I'm open to suggestion i'm saying the the, the first hit when i googled feral chihuahua rehab was uh the devoted barn feral dog rehab program yeah a, a dog rehab i think it's great yeah i'm gonna do it yeah, <laughs> Arizona neighborhood overrun by feral chihuahuas. Chihuahua dog gang runs wild in neighborhood. Oh, feral That's chihuahuas of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, it's a it's an epidemic, okay, and it needs to be stopped. <laughs> I really do like the dog. I do like the dog charity thing because it does kind of tie in with the whole like um like hounds. hounds. Yeah, the hound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The hound thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. Um, this is for Lou. Which out of town gang? And I say out of town because there's no other gang in Santa Juanita. You guys are it. Okay. So which out of town gang? Um, and it can be a motorcycle club or another type of gang, uh, is the main rival of the hounds. San Juan chapter. Like who's your who's your big Ooh, rival? This is, I'll totally like crowdsource this because it feels like a big <laughs> yeah, you can big yeah. thing. I just want a cool, um, like, rival name for them that's not too comic bookish. <laughs> well, how's um, that? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, but like, heaps of the gangs do have, like, pretty, like, the like, real gangs have names like that, I guess, too. Yeah, yeah, um, an out of town gang. I think maybe I think maybe I want it to be like a city, like a, a gang a from city the gang. city yeah. that's like push, trying to push into like. Yeah, that makes sense. That's like actually that, that that really fits Sons of Anarchy too, which is like yeah, yeah. It's like the they have their like we're like local, you know, charming local town, and then we have these like big city gangs, right? That yeah, gentrification. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of I. Th- are they, are, they a, want, are they a motorcycle kinda, club or a street gang? I kind of want them to be a motorcycle club just for that, like, cool rivalry. You know what I mean? Like, with yeah. bikes and shit. Um, can I have a little while to think of a name yeah, we, while we, yeah, we come go back to it. But it's going to be a city-based MC, right? Yeah. And maybe they pushed in, like, they're not part of, like, that's their little bastion in this area. Yeah. What were they called? Oh, I'm still thinking about it. Um, this is going to be for you, um, Duck. In the town of Santa Juanita, something tragic happened in recent years that drew the whole community together. What is it? Uh, wildfire. What was it? Wildfire. Wildfire. Good. Did like a lot of people lose their homes? Did people die? Like, how is it tragic? All, all, all of the above. I think it uh, destroyed the the high the local high school and a bunch of homes and other stuff. Maybe uh, it caused a, a, a big employer to shut down. And yeah, people died. And uh, last question is going to be for uh, Itchy. Every year, 
the club does something to honor the chapter's founder and indeed the founder of all of the hounds of the moon whose name is uh her name was carla hellraiser laredo what uh what do you all do every year to uh so oh carla she was killed a few years back by the way um every year you you all do something to honor carla hellraiser laredo what is that Um, I feel like it's like a oh, how does it work? It's like a I feel like pilgrimage is not the right word, but it's kind of along the lines of what I'm thinking of, where it's like you start somewhere and then you end up in San Juan. Yeah. Um, and like, and that also is like a fundraiser. <laughs> oh, for, nice. Okay, good. For the um, the the, the dog rescue. Wow, I ring of invitation. <laughs> yeah. okay, is, that, is that what we're actually going okay. with? I think it's chihuahuas. I've gotten used to it now. It's got to be chihuahuas, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got dog rescue. I've got dog rehab, yeah, dog rescue. Chihuahuas are dogs. Um, so it's good. So I, I like it. So it's like kind of a, um, like, it's like some path that you take that you ride through to get to San Juan. Is it kind of like a, like, is this like the towns that, hellraiser lived in or something like that like or, or the or the places she used to be is that kind of thing like or is it just like or is it just a, a motorcycle ride i think it's actually maybe it starts off like um it's like it starts off in her hometown Got it. and then this is where she ended up Got um, it. okay so then that's the path that we took is the we take the apocryphal path that she was supposed to have taken to end up in san Juan. i'd like to propose a name for this event the the hell ride for hope nice that's really good yeah i'm into it yeah. um i think i've got a name for the um it's a little bit on the nose like because it's so opposite i was thinking maybe the rising suns as the um gang name maybe they're out of um out of new orleans <laughs> Rising Suns out of New Orleans. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like the there? house of the, like the house of the rising sun. Or, you know? or a um, Japanese American motorcycle. <laughs> I, I would say, like, are they? A, I yeah, no. like a Japanese American gang. Is that that's what's what going I on? Here? That's yeah. what I thought at first, and then I thought of the house of the rising sun. You know. Okay. I love it. Maybe they the were. Maybe suns. it's a New Orleans and um, Japanese American um, <laughs> gang combination. You never know. C Cajun Japanese. I'm, I'm into it. Um, does that does that work for you? Sounds guys? like a really wild cuisine. I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> and I just wanted a sun's reference as well, even though it, you know, like with the moon. Because the, the moon, sun, yeah, got it. Yeah. <laughs> the sun's an anarchy thing, and yeah, yeah, yeah the sun to the moon thing too is cute. Okay, cool. Uh, so we have the rising suns. We have the hell ride for hope, which is a fundraiser ride that starts in. Uh, we'll say it starts. Let's say it starts a little down south because you can also pick up your drug shipment when you go down there so we'll say it starts in like la jolla which is like in san diego county and then kind of goes up so awesome okay uh three more questions and we're taking a, a, a longish break okay these questions uh now this is for robert because this is my suggestion robert my suggestion for character creation is you have little packets of questions like what i'm about to ask on the actual a character sheet or some or similar that the players can uh, choose from to pose to each other. Uh, I just have just written some that I'm going to pose to all of you for each other, but um, but I've got three, one for each of you, and I'll I'll create a fourth one for David to get him hooked in. But first is going to be for Itchy. Itchy, who here? Meaning of the other two characters, who here did you do time with? Oh, um, I think it's duck. Nice. Um, it's duck. Good. How, uh, did you guys like, was it the same crime you guys got put away for? 
Is that the deal, or is it separate things? I think we were both trying to rob the same place. Okay. And maybe that's where the famous duck incident happened. I don't know. Because <laughs> the the store owner stood their ground. <laughs> Oh, I get it. Oh, that's really good. So, like, you got smashed in the head and knocked out, and and that actually slowed you both down, and you got arrested, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, good. I like it. Yeah. Hence, duck. Uh, were you a... Uh, they have a name for them, and I can't remember what it is, but, like, were you, like, an initiate at the time, uh, duck? Prospects. Or, yeah, prospect. Yeah, were you a prospect, duck, or, or were you a full member yet at that point? Is that how you became a full member by by basically getting thrown in the slammer? I mean, yeah, I think that was like my that that was when I moved from being probationary member to, to a full yeah. member and yeah. I took it like a champ, both the uh, head blow and the the time. And, the, and the prison time. Yeah, good, awesome. And uh, I, I I should also mention I have follow up questions as well. Um, follow up question. What was the most gruesome thing? This is for maybe for both of you, but definitely for Itchy. What was the most gruesome thing you had to do to keep you and Duck safe in prison? One question. So is this like a co ed prison is the, the premise of this question? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, why not? Yeah, go for it. This is an alternate universe where everyone is equal even even people being oppressed by the man are equal so oh, God. <laughs> even, even people who are like caught up in terrible uh, unjust systems are nevertheless treated we are each of us equal gender. in our suffering <laughs> <laughs> exactly I, I, yeah uh, yeah so i mean what uh, yeah what do you have to do to like make sure the two of you survived i had to uh uh so, so I think someone was like really kind of leaning on us a lot and I had to follow up on my threat of uh, gouging their eye out with um, a dinner spoon. Mm, nice. Good. Thankfully, I only had to do it once. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Let's go to this question is going to be for Chops. Chops, who here of these two do you have secret feelings for? Hmm. I'm just, let's go with duck. And I think it's because of the, um, the, the handsome scar is part of it. I like a, um, I like a man with, um, with nice scars, looks tough. Nice. <laughs> uh, why are they secret feelings? Um, I think maybe there's probably a rule about um, like not having relationships between yeah. um, yeah, like within the causes, like bad friction. <laughs> awesome. Uh... We didn't actually talk about this, uh, but it is is uh, sort of homophobia going with uh, sexism and racism on this one? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I want to leave it out. Yeah, yeah. In our club, it seems to be the case. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe that might not be the case for other clubs, but it sounds like this club is pretty. You know, I mean, they had a woman who founded it. You know, so it's a it's a progressive, violent, murdering motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, so it's fine. <laughs> It's fine for Chops to have a male lover outside the <laughs> club. Yeah, and yeah. Inside the club. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm into it. Um, so, okay, good. Uh, I don't think I have any follow ups. That feels pretty good to me. I will ask this, though, about Duck as a sort of, yeah, as a follow up. Does Duck know this? Like, is it like, secret in quotes like duck is really aware of it or is it like or is it like a legit secret like duck has no idea uh i think it's probably a legit secret okay cool all right final question is going to be for you duck 
Who here do you trust the least and why? So we have the uh, sort of vicious stone cold killer in Itchy and the uh, in prison. But I think it'd be interesting yeah. if you still don't trust her, right? And the, oh, and the lovable the, stoner. The lovable chubby stoner that's secretly in love with you. Yeah. <laughs> I can see reasons not to trust uh, not to trust both of you, but I think that um, I, I I don't know that uh, chops can like can be there when the, the chips are down. Whereas I do know that uh, doing the itchy can, even though she's scary as fuck. What is something that Chops did? This is for everybody. What is something that Chops did that demonstrated Chops's unreliability? That time that we were supposed to rob that. What were we robbing? Was it a bank? Was it a, this, you know, those things that are not banks, they're like, like everyone puts their money in the same place. Like, a, pay, how about a, like, like a payday lender or something? Sounds like that. Well, I like the idea of being a payday lender. It's pretty good. Yeah. I, I feel like yes. a bank is too big of a deal for something for, to, for like an initiate to rob. Yeah, uh, I feel like it's like a local sort of thing, but it's more than a convenience store, you know? What I'm yeah, maybe, maybe it's like a pawn shop. How about a pawn shop? That'd be pretty good. Oh, sure. pawn shop's Because you said the person yeah. stood their ground, and pawn shop owners are kind of like, you know, they're they're questionable characters <laughs> all the time. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... You know, instead of the type to be like, oh, take my money, I've got insurance. They're like, no, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was Chuck's like stoned in the car out the front or something nice. yes. <laughs> <I'm asleep>. yes. <laughs> good good on the bike yeah, but... oh yeah oh, but we can uh yeah unless it was a getaway car situation oh, sure. yeah yeah which is Back not that's a thing yeah that's a yeah. thing I wonder if you like drove away because you were just like you were just too hungry and you had to get something you're like oh there'll be a bit more and then <laughs> you're gonna like, be a bit that... <laughs> you yeah. 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 So I went wow. through the um Deep fried chicken drive through or something. <laughs> yeah, so that's why. Chops. Awesome. Boy, oh boy. Okay, good. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, I do want to give you your homework for the break, though. So, when we get back from the break, I want you each, and I'm going to also do it, I want you each to have thought of two NPCs. The first NPC needs to be somebody attached to the club. So it can be someone's old lady or old man or significant other. It can be another member of the club. It can be uh, it can be the leader. If you guys wanted to find a leader, I'm cool with that too. But basically another member of so, someone attached to the club and the other person needs to be someone who's part of the community. So a community leader, maybe some kind of, uh, you know, just, just someone in Santa Juanita who, you know, maybe a crooked cop or something like that, right? Uh, just someone that you have guys, you guys have some kind of connection or, or familiarity with, but who's not a member of the club. So think of two NPCs each. For each NPC, we're doing this Monster Heart style. For each NPC, you're going to think of a question that you will pose to another player about the NPC, right? That kind of ties their player to that NPC in some way. A nice, juicy, leading question is really good. Like, for example, uh, what happened between you and, you know, Sheriff Johnson last summer that caused you to punch the shit out of him or something like that, right? Or, uh, you know, um, what happened between you and you know such and such as old lady or whatever, right? Uh, whenever or X, you know, just just something just something to kind of like kind of get some drama, get some conflict going, and importantly, a reason for you all to interact with NPCs. Uh, so we'll think of those two. Think of a question. I will ask a follow up question uh, for each one that is kind of meant to hook to hook you all together. So we have a PC NPC NPC triangle, right? or PC, PC, NPC triangle. 
Uh, maybe not for every one of them because there's only three of us. But uh, so yeah, so we're gonna do that. Think of two NPCs. Uh, we're gonna take a 15 minute break. We'll be back at 15 after the hour. Okay.
I'm feeling like I totally have to design a um, rising sun some um, patch now as well. It's <laughs> going to get should. out of control. <laughs> yeah, I think you should. It would be pretty great. <laughs> um. <laughs> I love catching up on the chat because I don't always pay attention to the chat when I'm kind of on on stage doing my thing, and so it's kind of fun. But... <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It seems it's interesting because the um, like the Ozpack crew are like crazy in the chat. We just go like nuts in there. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, a lot of my groups do too. Like the uh, like, well, like I have Fraser a lot, and Fraser's like always really active in the chat, right? So, yeah. Yeah, we do. We all play with him a bit too. But it's yeah. like going into some games, and I'm like the only person saying shit in there. And like after a <laughs> while, I just like give up because I feel like I'm like being a you know the only person talking at the table, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes like in the between, if the chat gets a little crazy, I will like I will like purposely go like really dark. Yeah, <laughs> real everyone's having too much fun. Yeah, <laughs> just, to get in, just just everybody goes whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would make the trap blow up though in our games. I think everyone would be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> all right, we're all back. Let's do some NPCs. I'm plugging my computer. Okay. I'm going to start with a community NPC. A former club NPC, but now just a community NPC. Uh, this is Susana Rios, a uh, an older woman. Um, she's the largest landowner in Santa Juanita, and she's Hellraiser's former old lady, uh, but not anymore. She's not part of the club anymore. Question for Itchy. You, uh, Susana Rios has not been a part of the club for a long time. Uh, the, was, she broke up with Hellraiser before Hellraiser was even killed. You still go around to Susana's spread, her big, her big old house. You still go there pretty regularly. Uh, why? Huh. Mm. I think I go there to do yard work for her because she actually she saved my life. And so I owe her that. She saved your life. Mm -hmm. How did she save it? From Hell, Hell, Hellraiser? Was that? Yeah, Hell, yeah Hell, Hellraiser was the founder of the gang. Yeah, from Hellraiser. Oh. Uh, yeah, I... I used to be the um, the courier, and I messed up a shipment big oh. time. And I think Hellraiser just flew into a rage. Awesome. I love it. For... This is for Duck to sort of follow up here. Why is it so dangerous that Itchy still goes around to Susanna's place? Uh, because uh, Susanna's son is the police chief.
Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, good, 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 good. I assume you disapprove. Yeah, I think this is nuts. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, that's my first character. Uh, whoever wants to go next. Um. You breathed first, Sam. <laughs> uh, this uh, this question is another uh, non club uh, NPC. This is for Chopped. Uh, NPC is uh, Sophie Garcia. She's the vet, uh, and so we work closely with her as part of our charity. Uh, what did you promise her? Sorry, who is the question for? That's for you, it's for you, Chops. Uh, I thought it might have been because nobody else was saying anything. <laughs> um, what did I promise to that? Um, I think I promised her a um, like a much too um, large amount of money, like a, a ludicrous amount of money for the um, charity, um, more than I could provide out of my own um, finances. Oh, uh, good. And is she like, is she like making preparations to receive that money? Like she's spending it already? Yeah, like maybe yeah. she's already <laughs> pretty much spent it. Yeah. yeah very good. <laughs> I like that. Uh, follow up question for Itchy. You've had a romantic relationship with Sophie in the past. Why'd it go south? Um. I think uh, it's the sun. What is it? The sun. Sunrise. The rising suns. Rising sun. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, one time, like, people from the rising suns came and like trashed the place that we were living in, like while we were in there. So they like, like threw things through the windows and like, and. Yeah, d you know, like just gang vandalism yeah. things. And that was enough for her to be like, <laughs> I can't be a part of your world or whatever. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like, you're too complicated or yeah. something. I don't know. It's no, not you, me, but it's actually you. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Awesome. Great NPC. Thank you. Or great answer. Thank you. All right. Who wants to do an NPC again? You're next. I have one. Um, this is for Duck. Um, what happened between you and Geezer? Because that character's got to be a real character, NPC, um, that name. What happened between you and Geezer's ex last Hell Ride for Hope that made Geezer pull a gun on you? Uh, so what is what is Geezer's deal? Geezer is a part of um, uh, the Hounds of the Moon. Huh. I, I, I think we hooked up. You hooked up with Geezer's ex. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't own her. They're not dating anymore. <laughs> nice. Uh, let me make a note of that. Um, what's the name of the ex? Can we name that character? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Yeni, um, Yeni Mendoza. Awesome. Uh, I don't think I have a follow up there because I think Yeni might be the 
the third part of that triangle. So awesome. Uh, who wants to go next? Um, I got one. Um, so Chops' sister is like a young, is a young cop. Her name is Alex Jones. Um, and we'll say um, this can be for Duck. Um, what leverage um, do you have on her? Like you've got something like that you can hold over her. Uh, I think um, that uh, she got on the wrong side of like some corrupt cops in the force uh, and uh, we, we beat the shit out of them for her to get them to lay off. They say the duck specifically beat up those cops. Yeah, sure. Okay. Duck, beat, duck beat them up. Awesome. And there's a natural triangle with chops there. So we'll kind of let that, let that sit. Uh, I'm going to do another one. So my club NPC is uh, a crazy son of a bitch named Bonefucker. Um, imagine the easiest... Uh, route to getting the sobriquet bone fucker, and you are correct. So, <laughs> bone fucker, question for question for uh, question for chops. I think bone fucker chops views you as like kind of um, like kind of like an easy mark in terms of like messing with you and teasing you and stuff and, and kind of like trying to get your goat or whatever. And my question is the last ride down to La Jolla, Bonefucker convinced you to do some real degenerate shit. <laughs> what was it? Just chewing. 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 Yeah, all the way. Ready? Go talk to Bianca. <laughs> Bram. Bram, I'm about to say grown up things. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. She's allowed. Yeah. To, she's allowed to annoy me twice a game. That was her second annoying. She's like making sure she really annoys me. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what did what did Bone Fucker get me to do? Lucky Rosie's allowed to hear swear words. No more. Okay, you you really annoyed me. You had your annoying. Go hang out with Zanky. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Um, oh, what would he have got me to do? I think. Um, I think what's well, really gross. It's hard. I'm not a gross person in real life, so I have to try work out what's gross. <laughs> <laughs> it could be just. It could be your. It could be Chops's perception of gross too. Right? I'm getting dead. Rosie, please don't, darling. Um. We went to stay at a cabin in the woods on the way and uh, I think probably um I think he probably like um <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like trying to get wrong, but not so wrong that I freak myself out. Um, Are we going to get zero stars in our Airbnb review for this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay, yeah. So it wasn't, oh, uh, yeah. It wasn't our um, house. 
that yeah. we were staying in and i think we probably just like got super drunk and we just like shat and pissed just all over the beds and like all over the walls just went totally poo crazy in the house <laughs> nice i love it but i want that to be some weird sexual element as well <laughs> we could just leave that. We could leave that blank. Yeah, unfilled some, for now. Real, some other really <laughs> weird stuff happened. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the uh, least strange part of it. Yeah, that was that was the fall play. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a uh, bone fucker hired like a sex worker to join you guys, and that was like all part of the thing. Yeah, no, I'm really into it. And then, question of kind of a follow up question for, uh, for duck why are you secretly a little jealous of this cabin trip the chops took because i want bonefucker's approval <laughs> nice <laughs> is bonefucker a senior member of the club is that kind of the deal or is he yeah. you look up to him in some way maybe he was my sponsor nice good i have one and this one is for chops because i only had one for duck um St steph Brown. So I know this is a very common name. So if someone wants to X card it, that's okay. I had to, I went and Googled 1990s baby names. Um, Steph Brown uh, works or volunteers at the, uh, at the shelter or the rehabilitation center. Why do you always avoid going there when she's around? I think I'm just going to connect it to the other thing and say that she was um, at the cabin in the woods. She was the person, you know, the, she, that's where she volunteers, right? It's like a charity. So her day slash night job, she's a like sex worker. So I think that's who, and like what vague things I can remember, I'm super ashamed and awkward about um, now. Yeah, so I'm totally gonna be hiding from her for the rest of my life now. <laughs> like the Donald Trump P tape. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, all right, so I have an NPC. This is like in some ways a little similar to Bonefucker, but I'll try and I'll try and distinguish. So, um, of the original like denim jacket, like true blue wolf pack bunch, uh, who are like. Carla's original her guys. original nine or whatever yeah. yeah there's only one left who isn't like dead like you know completely fried their brain on drugs in prison life in prison or something and unfortunately it's like the the worst one like our one elder is basically our version of itchy uh, and it's he's an old like wiry guy and his name is psycho and he always wants to do like he, people come to his advice and his advice is always like to do it the most like awful, like worst way. It's like effective. Don't be wrong. It's like effective. He does. He has been around the block a lot. He's kind of like cunning, but it's just always horrible when you do it his way. Um, and so uh, this question is for uh, for Itchy and it's that uh, Psycho is like sort of is or at least was kind of a mentor to you what is a thing that he did that kind of helped make you the way that you are? Um, I think he gave me the gun that I used to kill my dad. Damn. <laughs> okay, good. I love it. Uh, I might have a follow up here in one second, but I'm going to type this real quick.
Uh, well, first of all, I want to know why'd you kill your dad? He was asking for it. Damn. Good. Do not fuck with itchy. No noted. Um, good. Follow up question. For hmm, psycho. Psycho gave itchy the gun. Oh, I'm gonna save it. I might save it for David when he gets here next week. All right, so I'm looking for at least one more club NPC, and I think that's it. So whose is it? Um, okay, I've got um, my club NPC stitches. They're the, um, you know, the um, club kind of doctor or whatever that, uh, sure. yeah. um, you know, because we need that character. Um, and this question is for itchy um i just got a really basic one um that you owe stitches like something really like big and it's um i guess beyond it's like beyond their um you know medical like some, for something beyond that um so what do you owe to stitches Oh, uh, and maybe can I add? And um, why? Why do you have to? Um, like, why is it an urgent? Like, you need to. It's not a long thing. You've got to like pay it back, <laughs> like now. Okay, so I'm oh stitches like monetarily for something that's other um, than. It, it could be, or it could be a favor, whatever you wanna, however you wanna pay it. Okay, let me think. I think I've actually been paying for uh, Psycho's uh, medical bills all this time. But um, let's see. I think this depends on the timeline of like when we were in jail and all that stuff. But maybe I was just in jail for a long time and it's just like a huge amount that Psycho has built up because he's Psycho. Um, and I just have to pay that back. Yeah, because I guess they need like to buy medication and all the stuff to do their yeah. work with. So why yeah, do you... Like it, probably, it probably like all the expense of taking care of Psycho would normally come out of the maybe it would come out of like the it would come out of like the shares right the club shares or whatever or come out of it would come out of psycho share right mm. but yeah. maybe psycho can't because he's an older club member maybe he can't like pull his weight anymore and so you're the one yeah. doing that yeah. yeah so why is it urgent to um repay it mm. I don't know. I feel like this is something in Stitches personal life. <laughs> oh, I see. So Stitches has been helping you and with this. This is really interesting. Like, okay. And so Stitches has something going on in his personal life that is like, yeah. Uh, how, how about this? He can't be waiting. Yeah. How about Stitches needs to pay a bribe? Uh, otherwise, he's going to like, lose his medical license or it's going to come mm -hmm. out about him stealing drugs from the hospital or someone who just needs to pay someone off, someone who's like in the civilian world, but who's extorting him. Okay, so heat's on him and then he is now leaning on me kind of thing. Because you owe him money. Yes. Right. Got it. Because of Psycho. All right, good. <laughs> I love that little domino effect <laughs> thing. It's cool. <laughs> Uh, that feels pretty good. I don't know if I need a follow up there. That feels pretty solid. Um, I just need to make a note real quick.
Awesome. We are set to play. Uh, we have a nice, uh, awesome, fleshed out situation and world. I will take these notes and come up with some uh, some missions for next week and some other assorted dramas. And yeah, we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. We'll we'll do a little quick bit to get David kind of hooked in. Maybe give David a couple of questions uh, that we'll pose to him to get him kind of hooked in there. But he'll have these notes too, so he can kind of really quickly catch up with what's going on. Uh, yeah, do you guys have any other questions or anything else? All right, I'm excited um, to see the logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have a go of it over the next week. I um, I like. I think it feels like a like a small like town. The connections and stuff that we've made. So that mm -hmm. feels that feels really cool. Feels believable to me. Yeah, that was. I'm, yeah, I, I think so too. I'm looking forward to cute um, Chihuahua rescues. <laughs> <laughs> feral to our no 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 not cute They're dangerous not cute. yeah but is that the goal to help them to be cute again one day i, I, I will say so uh are we okay with some chihuahua related violence in this game <laughs> as long well I, well i put pet violence uh, behind a veil so it can happen we just can't see it so fair enough <laughs> for me anyway all right, awesome. All right, well, that was great fun. I feel like we have a really nice, good situation going on here. Uh, Robert, if you're watching this, feel free to steal any of that for procedures for your second edition. And I'm going to stop the broadcast. <laughs>